March 2020, the coronavirus pandemic struck the entire world, and in response, the governments of many countries implemented an aggressive lockdown policy. Every human activity on Earth was cancelled, and Formula SAE by no means represented an exception. And that was a bummer, because our team was just five months old. We really needed to work together to create bonds with our teammates, to know each other better. So, we got an idea. Good evening and welcome to the Formula University Summer League's final round! Since we couldn't meet on the real tracks out there, we went virtual and a lot of Italian teams joined us. So, being that everything was working out so well, we went full berserk, we moved to a set of Corsa. We all agreed to start with a couple friendly races for testing. And how not picking Barcelona for such a task? It really felt like a Formula 1 preseason test with all the impatience for the glamorous championship to start. Many of us didn't even have the custom liveries ready, but a couple teams did. Ferrara Squadra Corse, which had Lorenzo Turi as their top driver. Lorenzo was the winner of the Summer League, so he definitely was someone to keep an eye on. And Unicol Reparto Corse, with their top driver Andrea Palmieri, and it must be no coincidence that they were the most competitive ones in qualifying. Turin, in, in 1.36-327 hai fatto al primo giro. Non si migliora Matteo Smaila. 36-6. Palmieri invece l'ha scalzato. No way I'm starting on the back. I'm gonna give all I have. So I pushed. Andiamo a bot con Matteo, vediamo come se la calcola. Vedete, sfrutta molto il curvo all'esterno. Mentre curva 1. But I pushed too much. Don Lorenzo Turi che va a guadagnarsi la pole position di questa prima gara prestagionale davanti a Andrea Palmieri e a Matteo Smaila. At least my teammate Gabriele was right next to me, so we could hope to make it alive out of turn one. This is when you focus on how you're gonna release your clutch, when and how you're gonna push the brake pedal what strategies are feasible and what are rubbish. You never get used to it, don't you? Attenzione, uh, subito incidente nelle retrovie. I had a decent start and followed Palmieri to get his lips ring. Here came the first issue. Gabriele went off the track, which meant nobody was covering my back anymore. Palmieri che è riuscito ad andare a prendere la prima posizione davanti a Turi e Smaila. Fa la vena che è molto attaccato a Matteo Smaila. I underestimated the effect of dirty air and Christian Falavena, the other Ferrara driver, got me. I had to fix it quickly or Turi and Palmieri would have flew away. Turi prova ad approcciarsi a la prima posizione di Palmieri ma Palmieri non gli era molla. Fortunately they started fighting each other. This gave me an incredible chance at the end of the next trade. But I overdid it. I completely missed the breaking point and crashed into Palmieri. Definitely not the best way to start a rivalry. Turi got away unharmed and with him our chances to win since Palmieri and I lost a handful of positions. Now I was left with only one task, to come back. And so I did. I found Freccette Verdi at the front of Matteo Smaila who will certainly be in the way. Smaila who has passed the Luna Day is really in the way of the devil in the body. Behind Palmieri, Tomo Tomo Cacchio Cacchio is coming to Matteo Smaila. Matteo Smaila has a 37-389. He's made a half second to the couple in front. Here in the corner he helps, behind him is coming to Matteo Smaila. He's 37 and 1. Okay, I was there. I made it. But I still needed to get closer to take advantage if they engaged in a battle. Palmieri si ah si tocca con Falavena. Damn it, it happened too soon. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Too far. Brutto contatto per Falavena che non sarà contento. Okay, I've got another chance here at the end of this trade. Con tutte e quattro ruote, molte righe. Prova un vero simile incrocio per uscire bene qui Palmieri probabilmente si andrà a coprire sulla sinistra. Okay, last chance. I'll try to cross the lines. Ah, too bad. At least in the next few turns he didn't get away at his own pace. This meant I could wait the main straight to attack him. 
But then... He made a mistake, he made a mistake, it's my chance! Whoa! Yes, I'm through! Let's go away now! Sadly though, my happiness didn't last long. Qui Matteo subito si sposta per non offrire la scia, Palmieri però c'è una monoposto a Formula 2. He was bloody fast on the straights! How was that even possible? Ok, back to plan A. Since I was faster in the corners, next time I would have waited the straight to overtake him and then tried to create a gap. Wonderful! I just had to keep this distance through the entire sector. I was closer than expected, so I tried a disturbance maneuver. It worked! Oh, he was mine! Uh, wait! He went to the boxes! Well, I couldn't complain. It was time to push and try an overcut. I could finally smell the podium, let's go! On the timetable I saw that, luckily for me, Palmieri got stuck for a pretty good amount of time behind Grammatica, who eventually suffered the destiny I personally tasted a few laps earlier. In the meantime I was busy closing the gap with Gabriele and I was confident because I knew he was a bit slower than me. The second place wasn't a mirage, but I didn't know there was yet one more plot twist to face. The pit stop. Di Smila probabilmente si sta avvicinando sempre di più a eh, Sabak e pitano entrambi, attenzione. We entered the pits very near one to each other. And we were on the very same strategy. Lorenzo Turi was very far ahead of us. And according to my calculations, we were safe from Palmieri. What was about to go wrong then? I didn't understand how that happened, but it was irrelevant. The only thing that mattered was not to crash into my own teammate. I was on the inside, so I tried to guess the breaking point and hoped for the best. One moment can turn upside down an entire race. But not this race. Qui vanno al contatto i due piloti di UTS Racing Team. Scusa Gabri. Whew, that was close. Fortunately, it ended well. After a few laps, Palmieri went to the boxes again, and that neutralized him for good. The checkered flag saw two first, with 30 seconds on me and Gabriele. And now it was time to head to Malaysia. Buon pomeriggio, ben ritrovati. Wait, 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 wait. Too much enthusiasm. Turi got the pole position, Palmieri started second and I started just behind them. And the race was just a boring parade that confirmed those placements. On the upside, we were closer to Turi this time, so we made a step forward. On the downside, Palmieri made three steps forward, overtaking both Gabriele and me. We didn't prepare our setups too much for the test, but we definitely had to do something about it before the actual championship started. And actually, there was this little detail that Turi shared with us after the race. Listen to this. Notice it? He told us to look at the torque curve of the car. Turns out the engine was dying at high revs, so we really were changing gears too late. It was just the first friendly race, yet we were already forced to think to this level of detail. Now the championship was about to start for real, and there really were good reasons to be worried. Still, I had a good feeling about it. <laughs> 